join me today as I go pillaging through the Dove Valley, looking for castles and dragons' backs. I've got some visitors here, they all came running down the hill, I think they think I'm the farmer. Sorry guys, nothing for you. And this is where we're headed over towards the infamous Dragon's Back in the Dove Valley. What an amazing view. That's the Dove Valley. The River Dove starts up on Axe Edge Moor. I've done a video, I'll put a link before. There's about at least five rivers come off Axe Moor. One of them being the Dove, which is near Flash, is where that source of the river is. But we're headed over there to the Dragon's Back which consists of Chrome and Parkhouse Hills. You can also throw in High Wealden, which I've done before, not doing that today. We're gonna to go across Hollings Hill, and then we're gonna come right back along the valley, back to where we started. Had a bit of a mad cow moment then. I think they thought I was a farmer in my car. <laughs> it all come charging down the hill. Anyway, yeah, so that's where we're headed today. Behind me now, here is Pillsbury Castle, a double, mot double bailey and mott castle, I believe. I'll put a diagram up. So this is believed to have been built on uh, the site of an original Iron Age fort. Now, Pillsbury is two old words, I think, Berry and Pills. Pills, I think, was an old Celtic or old English word for fortified site, and Berry was the Norman word for the same sort of thing. I'll put up which way around that is, so hence Pillsbury, fortified site. You can see the layout there. It was a real key site here because it overlooked the Dove Valley and the Drover's Way that come through here, so they'd be able to tax, etc. I also potentially believe it might have been involved in a bit of an issue between uh, either William or Roger de Ferrers who poisoned the Earl of Chester. Again, I'll put a link up to the video, like I said. Uh, and so this was right on the border between the two. So. In the Norman Conquest, they very quickly built castles, first of wood and then of stone, just to control the area. You can see the vantage point here. You can see the whole of the Dove Valley. You can see who's coming and going, and then you can obviously tax them and charge them as they pass through with trade, etc. But yeah, fantastic views. We'll go and have a bit of a look around this in a bit more detail. <music> See the mound there, and then the river door. So what a vantage point. If you were controlling the area, that's exactly where you want to be. People are going to come through here. This might be the old drover's route here, winding along the valley there. And uh, you'd be sat here in your little castle, saying, hand over the dosh, mate. Not much more information on that sign than I've already mentioned. It was built sometime after the Norman Conquest. And then, probably after the revolt in the 12th century, it was destroyed. I seem to think it may have been built after the uh, William the Conqueror, what was called Harrying of the North, where he conquered a bit of a rebellion from the North. And essentially, pretty much, where the scorched earth phrase comes from, he basically raised everything to the ground, destroyed the crops, essentially starving people. 
and leaving nothing for anybody to live off. But yeah, stunning views. So that is Pillsbury Castle. That's a little hamlet of Pillsbury. I've just parked outside because they essentially, uh, the roads are very narrow and they don't really like people parking up there and sort of, you know, blocking their roads off. But yeah, anyway, lovely area. We're gonna crack on now along here to a place called Crowdicote. I think that's how it's pronounced, Crowdicote or Crowdicote. I'm looking at the way it's spelt on the map, Crowdicote, but I'll fill you in on the details when we get there. When you look at me this way I find it hard to not give in As I've mentioned in a previous couple of videos, I really am starting to use my metal Moabs rather than the Scarpers. So we're going to see how I get on with them today. They are waterproof. Uh, this is a bit of furthest I've walked in them. I've done about nine miles in them before, so this is going to be about 13 today. If that works, okay. Then bar bog hopping. And even then, I'm not too sure what I'd do. I'm going to use these and see how I get on with them. They're just so much lighter. Um, it's a Vibram sold. I like to say waterproof and it just seems to give you a bit more flexibility in your foot. I tend to find the boots nowadays, for whatever reason, a bit constraining, especially around the ankles with the Achilles tendon and I find myself, my feet and that are quite sore for a few days afterwards. So I'm hoping using these and then we'll see if I'm a proper convert or not. But yeah, River Dove down there, which goes all the way down into South Derbyshire. And I think it then meets up with the Trent. So yeah, um, again, I'll put a map up. I think I've done that on a previous video, like I've mentioned numerous times already, because I'm a bit repetitive like that. But yeah, so this is the Dove Valley. What a beautiful spot. You can see the light on. I think that's Park House and the bigger one is Chrome Hill. Uh, pretty sure that's the right way around. I'll double check. But yeah, the mist has cleared now. It, to this morning, the cloud was very low. It's very wet. When I woke up at seven o'clock, it was absolutely lashing it down. But uh, starting to clear up now maybe even a bit of sunshine later on and get up to about 13 degrees no wind so I brought the hover x1 out with me today so hopefully we'll get some footage especially off the top of those hills if the wind doesn't pick up because I think tomorrow there's some storm coming in from the northwest particularly going to affect Wales I think it's like Alina or Alicia or something like that but obviously that will sort of move across this way I'm guessing but uh, today I think we've timed it right Let's head off and conquer the dragon. Bit of blue sky breaking through there. So, Mr. Gavin Bonsall, he's got a channel called Peaky Plodders. He said this morning, fingers crossed. And uh, hopefully, uh, it's looking good because tomorrow is looking a bit of a washout. You'd love that, Adam. I just walked right through the middle of that lot, and they didn't fuck it, didn't bother me. As long as you didn't bother them, mate, just walk through. Yeah, fine. Nine times out of ten, or ninety-nine times out of a hundred. Anyway. Through this farm, I think it's called Bridge End Farm, something like that, into Crowdicote. We're going to be bobbing in and out of Derbyshire and the Staffordshire Moorlands here. That bridge there takes you over into Staffordshire Moorlands over towards Longner, I think, where we're going to end up later. We're going to wind away through the village now, though, and uh, over towards a place of a really interesting name, Glutton Bridge, which is where we start the Dragon's Bag. Oh, a nice little pub there. So this is a village of Crowdicote. Um, essentially, what that means, where it originates from, is Cruder was a Saxon landowner 
and Cot is a place of dwelling. So between the two, you've got Cree de Cot, and over the years, interestingly enough, a lot of people spell it C R O W D E C O T E. If I spell it, and on the map, it's C R O W I C O T E. So up to you which way you call it, but it's a lovely drive through here on a road as well. But look, now you can see where we're heading. That's where the bulk of our ascent and descent are going to be today. So we're going to wind down to Glutton Bridge, up on over those two, and back along the Dove Valley. So really looking forward to that. So yeah, we're going to follow the road a little bit here and then catch a footpath. So yeah, that's a lovely village of Crowdicote. I think this is a sign here. So let's go and see how they spell it on the road sign. Cause I'm sure it's an E but I can't be 100% certain. Let's go and have a quick look. Probably be a Ben sign or something. <laughs> oh, we've got a little collared dove uh, on that road sign. Yeah, how bizarre is that? So here, the actual place name is C-R-O-W-D-E-C-O-T-E. -E. On the map, it's C-R-O-W-D-I-C-O-T-E. -E. I'll take that, that's the right way. Doesn't look right with an I. So I think this is the footpath we get now. Rather old dilapidated sign there. There you go, if you need a dump. <laughs> Love it when these paths go through these old farms. All oh, time for farmers at the minute. I don't think it's going to get any easier. It's all right, isn't it? Crow de Coke campsite. I'll have to make a note of this one. I know there's one right in the middle of the dragon's back as well, but that looks like a nice spot, doesn't it? Noted. I guess we'll just swoop down then through there. Always does when the camera's not on. Caught a cracking picture the other day on a walk of a kestrel sat on a fence when I was over on Bradwell Trig. I'll pop it up now. That was a cracker. Can you hear that wren? I'm sure, I've said this numerous times, I do repeat myself, but I think that's got the loudest voice for the size of the bird in the UK. But look at that. There we go. This is Green Lane. Nice little ride away, which takes us down into a place called Underhill first, and you can probably see why that gets its name. I love these names. I tried to find out about Glutton Bridge, but can't just seem to find much on it apart from it's at the bottom of Glutton Dale. But I don't know where the name Glutton comes from. I know in other places with Tun on the end, Tun is like a, I think it might be Anglo-Saxon or something like that for, you know, it might be a guy called Glute and that was his place of living, a bit like Crowdy Coat. Um, but I'll do some research, a bit more digging. If I can find anything, I'll put it up. But yeah, the sheep farmer down there, shall I chat with him? Just saying how the weather's turned out nice, but it's giving it out bad tonight. If you're anywhere in the northwest, mate, uh, batten down the hatches. There's a big storm coming in. This is when you do think you'd uh, brought your fucking scarpers, mate. <laughs> Look at the state of that. Um, I think the best bet is going to be try and go around there without slipping in there. Wish me luck or we're going to get wet feet. We just managed to avoid that going over. <laughs> that was a mixture of shit, mud, water. Oh, this stuff's just fucking horrendous, mate. It's just trying to find your way through and trying to follow the footpaths of previous people. Because I probably would have found the shallowest route for this bog mire. <laughs> so far, so good. But yeah, see, I wheeled them. Quite a steep climb up onto that, but it's almost pyramid shaped. Really interesting uh, sort of topography there. Light on there. Pretty sure that's Chrome. Chrome Hill's the second one, isn't it? I'll just double check on the map. Yeah, Chrome's the second one. Park House is the first one. So that one in the background with a light on it, there's Chrome Hill. Stunning that, isn't it? Hopefully that light stays like that and we'll get some decent pictures in a minute. But we're just gonna follow this lane now. Lovely old track, this. You know, a lot of these old paths were like drover's roads in the past. Um, 
when we get to Holland's Clough I'll tell you a bit about that but there were quite a few mills around here some supporting the silk industry in Macclesfield um, like most valleys where you had a river flowing through there's always a good opportunity to set up a mill mainly in the 17th century let's just shut that is that going to shut? A number of gates you see open look at this lovely little lane here glorious See, we're on the border. This, this is the border through. I think the River Dove is the border between Staffordshire and Derbyshire, and uh, that's the Derbyshire flag. I wonder if that farm over there has got the Staffordshire flag and there's a bit of rivalry. <laughs> That'd be so cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> there's a load of long-tailed tits flitting down here. Going to that tree, I think. If I can see one there, I'm going to get some pictures. Here we are in Glutton Bridge. That way is Gluttondale, but really interesting. This is the home of the British Caving Library. Got a place as any to have it, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then there's a, an actual working phone box over there. Not many left that have a phone in them. Most of them now have defibrillators. We're just going to walk along here and then head along the track ahead of me towards the magnificent Dragon's Bat. You can see it here. This isn't a bad point to actually explain the geology of this place a bit. So like the rest of the White Peak, which is all limestone, 340 odd million years ago, this was all a tropical sea, but a very shallow one. And actually chrome and Parkhouse Hills were actually atolls, like small, almost like part of a reef, but they were actually popped above the surface, a bit like you see in the Indian Ocean and that. That farmer's wagon's a good timing. But that's essentially the geology area, so it's a site of scientific special interest, really good for fossils, but you can't take any samples. Tell a lot if we move the phone now. It was painted grey. Um, telephone box, it was known as a K6 telephone box, um, short for kiosk number six, designed in 1935. Sixth version on our streets, purchased and restored. So, sadly, no phone in it anymore. Um, anyway, we're going to go on the Dragon's Back now. Magnificent Dory Valley, superb. A lot of tumuli around here. You can quite clearly see one there. Then there's a couple over there. One over that way called Hatch Away Cairn, which is a, a tomb. Um, lots of caves around here as well. I think this is Gluttondale here. We got to Earl Sterndale just over there. Uh, high wielding, but yeah, look at that valley, lovely glacial, I think. But yeah, fascinating. We've done really well with the weather so far. Right, this is where we start the climb. I might, I will stop a couple of times going up this bugger and get some shots, hopefully. But if not, I'll see you at the top. Almost at the top. Look at that. That's a cracking little campsite there. We'll crack onto the top here. Get some photographs. Get a 360 in that. Stunning light today though. Great for photography. It's a bit slippy on the way up. So it can be fun on the way down on the other side. Um, limestone being wet and mud don't always mix. So just a case of 
keeping keeping three points of contact normally so I tend to not film <laughs> There we are, top of Park House, which is here. Oh, look at that. Quite breezy today, and you wanna wanna fall down there, mate. It's very slippy, you have gotta be very sure you're footing. Then we're gonna follow the path back down there into the gully, up Chrome. So yeah, stand on this bit. So, fantastic views. You can do a little shorter walk, which I'll put up uh, in the GPX in the description, as well as this actual walk, where you go from Ern Sterndale, which is just over there. It's about a six mile loop. You can either just do these two hills, or you can do higher wheel down over that way. But I'll put that route up as well. Look at that. Really, I've just caught the weather. You wouldn't have believed this when we woke up this morning. So yeah, so these are, as I said before, two atolls that were in a tropical sea 340 million years ago. And these two would have just popped above the surface of the water. So a cracking site for fossils. But as I said earlier, it's also an SSSI, so you can't take any samples. But yeah, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna get some pictures while I'm up here. Then we'll head down and back up over the next hill. where it's going to get fun now so really I'm going to just have to put the camera away because we're descending down here it's a very steep descent uh, and very slippy and muddy so I don't need to sort of take any chances but we're heading down there and then up the top of that Is this the right way to go? Sure, it wasn't this bad last time I came. <laughs> it's just so slippy. You've really just got to make sure your feet are gripping. Which is easier said than fucking done, mate. I'm gonna have to go on my arse here, I think. Okay. 
All right. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's a bit slippy, mate, actually. I've probably gone totally the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I'd be right. Probably just being overcautious. <laughs> Yeah, slow down, what yeah. makes a change? <laughs> Bloody hell, that's steep and slippy mate. I actually ended up coming down on my arse on one bit. <laughs> There's no real easy path. It's probably easier going up than down that way. Maybe that's why most people are coming this way and I'm going that way. Anyway, we cut down here and a path cuts off to the side, takes us down to the bottom. And then, yeah, off over there. And I think we go across up this hill here, which I think is I think it's this one or that one maybe and then along and back down to Pillsbury so we'll crack on now without further ado while we're here quite a cool cloud there I'll tell you a bit of a story I mean I came down on my arse on bits on there but oh, a few years ago now me and the missus came out with my sister and brother-in-law and their two uh, niece and their two children my niece and nephew they weren't very old at the time it was in the lockdown or just after so you're probably talking three or four years ago now so she'd have been bloody 11 or something down like that probably and we came down here she got to about there and froze wouldn't come wanted the mountain rescue to come and fetch a blesser so sorry about that ruby probably scored you for life in hill walking now and then they went back around there and sort of waited and me and uh, my brother-in-law went up and over and and came around the back to meet them but yeah i wouldn't recommend well, it depends how good your kids are but i'd be a bit careful it is if you come this way certainly it's quite slippy be very careful. It had been raining last night, so it's been a mixture of mud and uh, you know, water, which on limestone is quite dangerous, so you really have to just take your time. I had a few arse clenching moments as I came down there. <laughs> so that's where we've just come down. Not for the faint hearted, I came all the way down that and then fell over on the mud there. I think I'm alright, but I just clip my knee a little bit. But yeah, there's a farm over there that does a nice little campsite. Nobody on it at the minute, so I'm not sure if it's open during winter. But we're going to head over this way now. It's just turning midday, I think. About 10 past 12. Look at that. So, oh, plenty of time left, but I've just niggled my knee, so I'll see how we go on up this hill. Because I don't know, we've still got to get back over to. Uh, <laughs> back over to Pillsbury. I think we're probably, once we've been up Chrome Hill, here we've still got about nine miles left. So I'll see how we go up here. If it hurts too much, we'll uh, bail. That's where we've just come down. That bit, just see where the path snakes to the right. That's the hardest bit. I've done my knee in a little bit, but I think we'll be all right going up there. shots I'll show you them quite a few people up on the top of here it's quite a busy walk and then we're gonna head down here along along the bottom of that in that track there and then back up the valley back to Pillsbury about eight miles to go 
and he seems to have healed up a bit now. We're going to wind our way down this path. You can see it winding its way through there, and you just drop down to the bottom. So we'll crack on down there and then stop somewhere for lunch, I think. Again, it's this rocky path. I think the one that goes around the bottom is a better one. You can go around the edge of these lumps, but it's quite slippy on this grass. So we're going to err on the side of caution. We'll follow the well-trodden path, but I won't film here because I'll end up on my arse again, no doubt. <laughs> That's cool, look at that. Mint. We're following the path this way, if I remember rightly. So slippy, because trouble is, you get so much fucking mud in your shoes, and that's on the slime stone. Don't care what boots you've been, mate. I think if I'd have been in my scarpers, I'll be honest with you, because the sole is so inflexible to some extent, I think I'd have struggled. That's lunch break over. <clears throat> nice little spot that, just a view straight down the dragons about there. There's a nice bit of pork pie and a pecan tart. We're going to go along that path down there. Cool little cave there. Remember last time we came, there was a sheep in there hiding out of the weather. It wasn't the best. <laughs> That's where we've just come down from the top of there all the way around there. Not as bad as Park House, so a little bit easier. Um, not too bad at all that. Park house was a nightmare, the one particular bit where you really have got to pick your way through the rocks and uh, like I say, I ended up going on my arse and sliding down a bit to be fair. <laughs> but uh, better safe than sorry mate, because if you went off there, uh, it wouldn't end good. <coughs> so, fueled up a bit now with the old uh, pastries. Nice little spring there. Should have bought my, uh, what's the name? Oh, God, B3 thing, uh, water filter. Could have had a little drink out of that. So I'll be fresh. But yeah, we're coming over here now. Through this gate, I think. Just checking the map. No, we just need to be up here a bit. Beside this fence, actually. Where these sheep are. Stunning view. Chrome Hill there, look at that. Now we're going to come back this way, so we should get a stunning side on of the dragon's back. So, there we go, guys. That's the dragon we came to slay, and we've done it. So now we're going to wind our way back to the castle that we stormed earlier. Nothing like a bit of pillaging to keep you going. Bit of a pothole there. Probably where the spring comes from by the looks of it. So, there'll be loads of cave systems around here, being limestone and that. There's a few over there, I think one's called Foxhole or something. But yeah, this is where we go. Top of this wall. Hey up. Don't worry about me, mate. Don't have to get up just for me. It's a World War II bunker on top of that hill. There's a whole array over there. They used to have a big munitions dump and then I think it was a testing ground after that. Might do a walk around there because you can explore some of them. They also sold a nuclear bunker over there not recently for 30 something thousand pound. One very big like, <laughs> but a useful bolt hole. Some off road is tatting around there. Good laugh mate, I used to do a bit of that. We going up there as well, that's where we're going. So we're going to go down to this farm up onto this is Hollins Hill with a Tom Willis on, you can just see that nipple there. So still probably about halfway around now, just over. It's just about half past one. Sunset's at six, so plenty of time. It's only took me like maybe two or three hours to get here. So should be back about half four or five o'clock to the car. So plenty of time before the sun goes down. Here we are, top of Hollins Hill. And this is the Tom Willis. We're going to get some fantastic views off here. I believe this is an Ethel. 
I've not done this one before, but yeah, someone's dug that out. I bet that was Mr. Bateman, but look at that. Look at that view. Absolutely stunning. You can see Crome Hill with Park Hill behind it, but just look at that. That is why you come out and to do it outside, mate. Stunning 360 views. Back over towards Buxton. That way, I think you've got Harper Hill raceway track there at uh, Buxton raceway track. You've got some two, Second World War pillboxes there. That's Axe Edge. The river Dove starts up there because I think up there where the road is, that's Flash, the highest village in England. I've had it all there. I think it must be that one. One of those two anyway, one of them is Flash. I think it might be that one actually. But just off there is where the Duff starts and winds its way. You can see where it's coming down here and into the valley. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. All this on your doorstep. You know, it's not far away for a lot of people this. But absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so you can see where this barrow has been dug out. This would be Bronze Age burial mound. I'll see if I can find about anything, if they found anything in here. Don't we find relics of human pottery and stuff like that? But yeah, what a beautiful view. I'm going to take some photographs of this. The light is absolutely stunning today. I very nearly didn't bother coming out, but uh, so glad I did. So glad I did. Just shows you, just get out, whatever, you know. So we've got about six and a half miles left now. So we're a good seven or eight miles in. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. It's, it's the only word you can describe, isn't it, really? So just, you know what, just get outdoors, no matter how you're feeling, just get out, because your day can turn out like this. That's a leak road that goes to the tops. You can just see over there in the horizon, that little black lump is the roaches. We used to live over in Wild Boar Clough, just over there at the bottom of Shutlands Lane. Fantastic. I think you can see, yeah, Grinlow with Solomon's Temple on it, on the horizon there. So Buxton's just behind that. Over that way is Shining Tor by the looks of it. That'll be Shining Tor over in the Goit Valley there, where we were a few months back in winter and I lost me, I lost me of a mic. <laughs> so I made it down to one now. But yeah, oh, I might just sit here a while, take this in, and then we're gonna crack on down here. We go off to the right and drop down into Holland's Clough. Interesting sign. No dogs, 1st of March to 1st of November, rights away at 2000. Sorry, no dogs. I guess it's because they've got sheep. But I've uh, heard that law before, but they must know what they're on about. Bloody hell, this path ain't used much, is it? Or is it? That's a bit fucking, <laughs> a bit windy. And a bit slippy. Fucking hell, mate. Just try it, that's it. Before you have your eye out with that fucking all form bush. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> As paths go. Going through the jungle there, mate. Briars and all sorts. Oh, look at that footpuff so footpuff sign, footpuff. <laughs> and then we're up and through again out. Just 
start to follow this down the hill. Finally got a bit over the top. That was horrendous, that. <laughs> Absolutely fucking horrendous, mate. It's like a bog fest. It's actually got like a bloody pipe running water down. It makes you wonder if it's fucking deliberate. <laughs> fucking nightmare. Look at this cool old gate here. I'm sure we used to have a garden gate like that years ago. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, a good creak to it. Super. Fantastic. It's like a little bridge down here. Just watch it here. So slippy in the wet. Oh yeah. Look at that. Lovely. Look at that lovely river babbling through. Superb. Bridal way there if you want to take it through the water. We're following this footpath up a bit of a hill. A little weir down there. Some lads on motorbikes up there having a good old blat. I think it's their farm. But yeah, can't beat it. Just a little bit of that when I was a lad. It was a proper little bridge, that, isn't it? Look at that. Super duper. Absolutely stunning. You could filter that and drink, I bet. Now we're just entering Holland's Clough, not long now. Holland's Cuss comes from Howell's Ravine, that's the name. And there used to be an 18th century mill here doing silk, which was uh, then sold in Macclesfield. The old chapel there has been turned into a tea room. That's the old vicarage. Lovely little place this, isn't it? Restoring another little church there, by the looks of it. I read something about that, I'm not sure what they're doing with it, what they're restoring it, because it's pretty much was shut and closed down, but yeah, lovely little village. What a great spot to go to school, mate. Look at that. What a view. A cool little honesty shop. Got ice creams, you've got drinks, you've got these cakes, coffee machine. Fantastic. I've had a Fanta, that's all I'm going to need today. But uh, yeah, we're worth dropping in there. Creepy little place. Yeah, cool little entity shop that, and it takes cards. So you can't beat that. So, fueled up. We're going to skirt around here now, and then back along the way we came. By the looks of it. And that's why you should always carry a bit of cash on you. I mean, look, that was a card one, but a lot of them are cash. I've been caught out once, uh, one of my previous videos. I uh, went to Haversidge to get the bus, started out, realised halfway I hadn't got my card on me, or any money. <laughs> so now, I mean, I used to as well, but I don't know why I'd stop doing it, but I always keep a tenner in my rucksack, just a couple of fivers, because you never know when you might need it. They came in handy then, because I've now got a nice drop of sugary Fanta. Lovely little ford there, over the river. How nice is that? Up a slippy bank, over the footbridge. Fantastic that, oh look at that. Gorgeous, winding its way through. A little bit of a tributary coming in there, flowing into that. Excellent. Fantastic. It's quite a deep one. <laughs> yeah, it's quite deep that. Superb. Beautiful. So there's another brook runs in there into the, this is a dove. Oh, you won't get over there unless you're, if you were a bit of a chubster, would you? Anyway, crack on down here and then over towards Glutton Bridge again. Clearly signs everywhere saying don't park. What do they fucking do? Knobheads. 
a few people up on Wilden, High Wilden there. You can hear them even down here. Amazing how the sound carries, isn't it? But I can hear them down here and it sounds like they're just close by. Oh no, there they are. <laughs> Someone halfway up or halfway down. It's a steep climb that. We're uh, just heading towards Crow de Cote now. Yep, we've got Billy Goat. <laughs> You're all right, mate. <laughs> Look at the beauty, here, isn't it? Hello. And you too. Shaggy ink caps. You can actually eat them, but they look a bit worse for wear, like them ones over there. Cool. Yeah, some of them are dyed, so they like gold ink. You can use them as an ink. You can actually eat them as well. Uh, but they look a bit better, a bit worse for wear, but I'll get some pictures of them because they look fantastic. We're just back at Pillsbury Castle. You can really see where the bailey is now from this view angle. So that lump to the right, that's the bailey, and then the rest is the mott. You can really see the earthworks there. Stands out quite well. Like I said, I, I mean, I think I put a diagram up earlier, but you can really see it now stand out, can't you? That really did sort of tower over the... Um, Dove Valley. This route we're taking is the main drover's route, so you were right on it, mate. There's no way you were getting through here without paying your dues. And that's all a lot of these Norman castles were. A lot of them didn't even really see any action as such, uh, apart from if there was a revolt and then they had to come and sort whoever was revolting out. But generally, they were more administrative and just for control, quite an imposing to see a stone castle on top of there with some lord. Or his officers in there who would, you know, pretty much have a right to do what they liked, I guess. Enforce a law and they were quite uh, quite harsh sometimes in their punishments. So, yeah, stunning that. Get a picture of that because it's really with that light coming over from that angle. That's really good. It's been absolutely balmy today. I don't know what temperature. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, 13 degrees. Feels more like bloody 18, to be honest. It's a lovely day. A couple of times I've took my fleece off and I've just had a t-shirt and my uh, uh, like base layer on. But yeah, it's too superb. So yeah, we're going to go up there. I might even stop there and have a bite to eat. Just finish my pork pie and my pecan tart off. Then head up over the hill and, and back to the car. That old stone, it's got a hole in, so it would have probably been repurposed as a like a gate post, maybe on the track. But that could have been an old standing stone before that. Got all the hallmarks. Look at the look at the lichen on it, that can be hundreds or even thousands of years old, you know. So cool. So, all these things people must have walked these paths for thousands of years. Just noticed a trig over there. That's uh, Sheen Hill. Not sure if that's an F or not, probably, but looks like it's on private land, so whether you can get to it or not, there's a few that you can't. There's, um, you can't hear it, but there's a couple of buzzards over here being uh, shooed off by ravens. So that was quite interesting. I won't be able to catch it on this camera or even the other one, really, not, not greatly. But yeah, they were proper having a go. The ravens were shooing them away. Cool to see that. So yeah, not far now, up over this hill, across the field, and we're back. You can see the route behind us there, down to the Dragon's Back. That hill in the distance is Hollins Hill. We can back down there and back along the valley. Superb walk that. Lots of history. A quick pillage down the Dove Valley, taking in a castle and a Dragon's Back have it. Back to the car for pork pie, peak and tart. I'll do a very quick wash up. And then, right to the very end, I'll do a 3D walkthrough uh, of the walk using Google Earth. Me and technology, who'd have named it, eh? 
Well, that was a cracking route. I'm glad to get back in the muddy car, I'll tell you that, mate. <laughs> lovely day, lovely day. But yeah, um, as in Viking style, we went a quick pillage down the Dove Valley. The only thing I really pillaged was a Fanta bottle, but you know, that was nice. But yeah, we visited Pillsbury Castle, which is a site of a Norman castle, but probably an Iron Age site before that. Then we went up over to Dragon's Back, which is Parkhouse Hill and Chrome Hill. Did my near little bit coming down off Parkhouse, so I did all the rocky slippy bits fine. And then got to a bit of a muddy bit and fell on my arse. <laughs> and then we came back over Hollins Hill, which I've never done before, so that's a never Ethel in the bag. There were some stunning views there, back over to the Dragon's Back, absolutely brilliant. And then we came back along the way we came through uh, Glutton, I think it's called Glutton, yeah, Glutton Mill or whatever it's called, Glutton, Glutton Bridge, that's it. And then uh, back along through Underhill and that, and back over the same way, back via Pillsbury Castle. Cracking walk, but yeah, fantastic that. Next video, I think, will be a wild camp on Halloween with a guest. We'll show you more when we get there. So for now... Stay safe on the hills. So we parked just outside Pillsbury and then over the fields towards Pillsbury Castle, a Norman castle, probably built on the site of an Iron Age fort. From there, we then went along the bottom of the Dove Valley through various farms towards Crowdicote. Some great views here over the valley. We nipped for the little village of Crowdicote and then on towards Glutton Bridge, where we come to a little lane through under hill, etc., and we come over to a, a little road called Green Lane, a nice little country lane. We then follow that back down to Glutton Bridge and then up over the first hill, which is Park House. Now, just be aware when you come down the back here, it is very slippy and the wet, so just be careful. Across and then over to the next hill, which is Chrome Hill. Fantastic views from the above there, and again back down the, the other side to the bottom. Then up past a nice little freshwater spring, and then over down the valley again and across the end up onto Hollins Hill. A great little tumulus on the top of there that's been excavated before. We then followed the ridge along Hollins Hill with great views over to the Dragon's Back, as it's known. And then we dropped down into the village of Hollins Clough, a nice little village come Hamlet in the Derbyshire Dales. From there we then start to go back along the route we took so we then go across to the bottom of Crobe Hill, along the bottom of Parkhouse Hill, back through Clutton Bridge and then back along the Dove Valley all the way over to Pillsbury Castle again through the various places we did on the way, Bridge End Farm, Underhill and a few other little hamlets. Some great walking there across fields with some great views of High Wilden to your left and uh, a few other hills and the like across the Derbyshire Dales. Back to Pillsbury Castle and up a short sharp hill back over to Pillsbury where we parked the car.